It's time for another episode of The Sean Tabbitt Show, a podcast where I connect you with thought leaders from across the globe, digging into some of my favorite topics like personal development, marketing, spirituality, and pretty much any other shiny object that happens to catch my attention. Today, my special guest is Rietta McPherson, and we're going to be talking about her book, A Message from God, A 12-Year-Old Boy's Experience in Heaven. Rietta, it is truly an honor. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Well, I, I think the place I'd love to begin uh, your your accent sounds far different from my Minnesota accent. So uh, just give us a little context. Uh, where are you in the world? A little context for your ministry. I uh, normally ask an origin story question, but we're going to get into a bunch of story. Uh, so just give us a little bit of context. Tell us about yourself. Well, I'm in South Africa and uh, all the way, long way. But, you know, in the spirit, we connect. So it's not that far away. Well, 18 years ago, um, me and my family have been in a very bad car accident. And my my oldest son, that age, was 12 years old. And we had in this accident, he had a brain injury. And this is where our whole journey started. Because before that, I would have said that we were Christians, but very much still, you know, religious. Meaning, you know, you can know about God, but not being one with him. So in that journey, um, in the accident, what happened is um, the the 911 came, the helicopter came, they took him to the hospital. Long story, he was in a coma for very much a month. But about the week two, he um, the doctor said that there's no more hope when they wanted to put off the machines. So in that place... And this is what we are talking today. You know, many people have this heavenly experience. So in that place, this is what happened to my son, older, 12 years old. Your flesh gets out of the way. Your soul gets out of the way. And there your spirit is ready to meet the king. Now, he had an encounter right there with God. And in that same time, we had, he had his experience with God. I was just a normal mom crying out for God. And even though I wasn't in that state, my spirit also cried out to God. And there on earth, not in a coma, I also had an experience with God. And I think this is what I want to bring to people to know that we don't need to wait for a near-death experience to meet God. God is waiting for us. The doors of heaven are open for all of us. One one of the specific things uh, I want to focus on from your son's time in heaven is he meets two boys, and I just in the uh, gosh, I think between Randy Kay and myself, we've probably done somewhere between forty and fifty heaven conversations, and wow. one of the things that has come up a number of times is you know people either seeing lost children in heaven, whether they were aborted babies or miscarriages or children who really died before their time, and I, I know. That has been such a blessing to families across the globe who've written to us and said, wow, that, that really blessed me. I, I lost my child. This gives me hope to know that they're in heaven uh, waiting for me. Uh, that, that, that really struck me from your story. I'd, lo- I'd love to hear a little bit about that. That's an amazing story what actually happened there. I was telling that to someone the other day, and every time I tell this, it's amazing. What happened is um, while we were in hospital and he had this uh, in the coma, I had um, a message somebody phoned me and it was the day before they was going to put off the machines and this guy was saying to me he says Rieta um I just want to encourage you our son had the same experience and he said he was also he actually was drowned in the sun sand he, and he he died but I didn't know he died he said my son was also in a coma and I asked him this question I said and how's he today and then he said, he died. I was in so shock. I put the phone down. While those people went and found our dress, they went to search for us, and they left the card. This is a miraculous story. He, they left the card. So in the time that my son had this heavenly experience, he met this child. So then let's go forward. And by three months, we went back home. And he was like, you know, when somebody come out of coma, but still lying flat, couldn't speak, couldn't talk, nothing, but he could write. And one morning he was showing me once to write and he's, I gave his pen and everything. And he said, I met this boy in heaven and his name was Duena. And he said, 
you need to find his parents and tell them he's so happy in heaven. He don't want to come back, but he says this. But tell his father, he needs and mother, they need to give their lives to the Lord. That's what his request is. And then he went on and he said, he need to sell his um, airplane. Now I thought, okay, now we lose it. Now we lose it. How many people do you know that has an airplane? And he said, but you have to tell them today. He is very happy and he didn't want to come back. And he said, you have the details. And he was explaining about that card. And I put one and one together. Those years, it was still fax machines. You remember the fax? Mm -hmm. I thought to myself, Lord God, you need to have grace on me. What if I send this letter to people whose son died and this is not right? And he wrote, he says, mom, trust God. I sent the letter and he said in the letter, God wants to use his parents for his kingdom. I sent the letter and I was like, God, this is a step of faith. And sure enough, these people phoned. And the mother said, I couldn't wait any longer to hear from my son. And I was ready to do anything to hear where's my son. And here I received this letter out of heaven. And you know about, it was about 15 years later. Oh, by the way, the guy had an airplane. He was a businessman. About 15 years later, I don't know if you ever heard about Uncle Angus Bachum here in South Africa. He had then a campaign and everybody came together on the, um, on the rugby field. And this guy stood there and gave his testimony with this letter 15 years later. And he was on his way on a mission trip. They sold everything on a mission trip. And there they were ministering around the world. So for me, it was really God was teaching me steps of faith. When God prompts you to do something, for him to write the letter, this is who I saw in heaven. Tell his parents he's so happy. And this is something that we need to know. You know, heaven is a place where we are in God's presence all the time. Who would want to come back? But that place is also there for you and me right now, as we can bring kingdom down to earth. But yes, that's quite a remarkable, amazing story. So we know these people till this day, and we became actually friends. Uh, another part of your story, I want to uh, jump backwards a little bit. Uh, you know, you had talked about getting to a place where uh, the doctors are telling you there's no hope. It's time to pull the plug. Uh, anybody who's been in that place with a loved one in the hospital, uh, you know, you're, you're going to prayer, you're interceding, you're just, you're wrestling. Uh, talk to us about uh, the conversation you had with God. Uh, you, you, you get alone, you go to pray, something significant happens. It changed my life. Until this day, I believe you need one second in the presence of the Most High God and your life will never be the same. He stole my whole life with his love. I was crying out to God and said, God, I, my, again, I was on my face and my, my flesh came out of the way because I was so broken, but my spirit reached out to God who is spirit and we connect. You know, it's where your heart and God's heart connect, life change. And I asked the Lord, help me. I just said, help me. I didn't ask him to save my son because his heartbeat went down. And I mean, how do you know he's going to die? And I said, Lord God, help me. How am I gonna, how am I gonna survive this journey? And I heard him say, Heaven's doors are open. My son died. You can come boldly to the throne of grace to receive this mercy and grace. And I'm telling you, that day God gave me great grace, not grace, great grace. And that's always for us there in his presence. And he said, I asked him this question, spirit to spirit. I said, Why did I search my whole life for you? And I couldn't find you because I did try. And he said, you were serving other gods. I said, no, I did not. I was a Christian. I am a Christian. And my spirit knew what God was saying. You know, people ask me often, what is an idol, Rita? 
anything that you love more than you love God is an idol. My children were my idols. My, my life, you can be your own idol. And in that moment, I just experienced how God said, lay it down, lay it down. And I, lay, I just gave everything. I didn't even ask permission. I gave my husband's business away. I gave everything. I gave it to God. And then my life start with him. And he said to me, I want you to walk the walk of faith. He says, faith, my child, is not what you see, but what you hope for. And he says, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. And I will not leave my hand upon you, I, of, of you. I will always be there. You know, he showed me the outer court, the holy place and the holy of holies. And he showed me there I was in the holy of holies. That changed my complete life. I was never, ever the same person. It's 18 years later. And that's why I always say, you know, having an encounter with God is wonderful to write a book about that, what we did. But you have to have a life after because, you know, you need to grow in Christ. You need to mature in Christ. Now, in the book, he wrote a very profound letter. Um, and that was afterwards. One night he looked at me and I was on my way out. We went to dinner and I had a gray dress on, very much glitter those years. And he looked at me and the one eye was still blind. And he looked at me with one eye and he couldn't speak yet. And he wrote, he says, mom, I saw in heaven a bridge. I saw people with gray clothes that couldn't enter. I see people with black clothes that couldn't enter. The lukewarm and the cold. He says, only those who had transparent clothes on could enter in. You know, Daniel talks about the shining ones. And this is the journey with Christ. The identity, the destiny, and the value of Christ. That we become one with him. You know what you gaze upon, you become. So the more we gaze upon God, enter in his presence, enter in his glory, we become. So yeah, that is a very hard 18 years journey that we've walked and still walking. Because my son is today 30 years old. And he still can't speak well. He still can't speak, walk well. He still has a severe brain injury. So people say, so you met the king and he's not healed? You know, it's not even about what we experience here on earth. I can tell you one thing. We're not the same people anymore. And that's what's life. Well, and, and I'd love to back up a moment and just talk to us about the transition from that moment of there's no hope you have this encounter with the God of the universe. And then eventually you end up back home. Uh, what was that transition out of the hospital and back into what would become your new normal in terms of life? Well, everything changed immediately because in God's presence, I learned so much. I've learned in that little bit of time that I would say you, you wouldn't know the time. Like Paul says, have I been there, there, how long? I don't know. But in that time, God spoke so many things to my spirit. You know, God can download and um, so many things. But what I've learned from God there, he said, you need to speak life. You need to bring kingdom down. You need to see it first. And if you can't see it, you can't bring it. And if you can't see it and bring it, you can't have it. So, you know, he was lying there, couldn't speak, couldn't walk, couldn't talk, trachy, feeding tube, everything. There was just no, he, he, just, was, he just had breath. That's it. He's, even his jaw, everything was spastic. And in that time, God spoke to me. He says, his spirit can hear every word. Speak to his spirit like Lazarus. And call his spirit to, his, to the front through the blood of Jesus and speak to his spirit. You know, the word of God says, thus says the Lord God Almighty, I shall cause my breath and my spirit to enter into you and you shall live. And God says, speak to his spirit, speak life. And there were so many doctors that came and they visited us as home and they looked at the x-rays and they they just said, oh, there's no life. And I said, no, there's life in what we speak. You know, the words of our mouth gives vibration and we need to come in heaven's vibration and heaven's frequency so that kingdom can come down. You can't speak death and expect life. So what God was actually saying, and he was teaching me to bring my words and my thoughts and my life in alignment with heaven and to bring heaven down. So yeah, a journey of faith. And it is not always a journey of faith, not always an easy journey. 
And I think many people make a mistake and say, you know, the day when I met God, everything just perfect. No, then your journey starts. But it's what an amazing journey. And God wants to continue. And after that, he wrote many books, but one of them are Kingdom Principles. How God showed him kingdom every day, how to live kingdom. Don't live for yourself. I will look after you. And um, I just see this on my desk. It was those beginning letters that he wrote. Very in the beginning, he says, it was wonderful in heaven. We played, we sang. Jesus were always, was always with us. The angels was the whole time with us. We were so happy in heaven. Jesus is always with us. And, it, you know, it's a small little sentence, but if you grasp it, Jesus is just always with us. One day a lady came to my home and she was busy dying from cancer. And she said, I want to ask Aldo, how do you die? I thought, wow, we can't ask someone that. Those years we didn't even dealt with the trauma yet, you know, all the trauma that he went through. And he, he spirit heard that and he came down, but he had, we have rails in our home. So he came down difficult. He came down and I helped him. And he says, he speaks very slow and monotone. And most people can't hear him, but we now can. And he says, I want to show you how you die. I thought, no, what do you mean? You want to show her? And she was really thin. And he says, ma'am, just close your eyes. And he, she closed her eyes and he said, you can open them. You can open them now. He says, just like that. And you stand before the throne. Jesus says, I will never leave you and never forsake you. He take you from here to there. You're never alone. You know, things like that really helps me to get perspective of King, kingdom and heaven. This kingdom, God wants to prepare a landing place for us right here. So we can have all that in our lives today as well, as it is in heaven here on earth. And I'm curious to hear um, in this other side, this latter part of your journey, uh, one of the things that seems quite typical is people who have a heaven experience. And, and I would I, I would argue that your experience in the, in the hospitals, you got a touch of that heaven experience as well, is people are in this place where they kind of always have a foot in heaven and a foot here on earth as well, almost like they're functioning under an open heaven. Um, you know, whether we're talking about ways that you've been able to minister to people or kind of the, the downloads and encounters you're having and things that you have to share with others. What are, what are a couple of the most more surprising things that God has brought about just through these circumstances in the past few years? You know, the journey was definitely not an easy journey. I can tell you that. And, um, but one, uh, what I've learned is when your source become the spirit of God and you're not living your life and drawing out of soul, but you live your source out of kingdom, out of the spirit, um, your, your life change. I have learned that what you're saying is, is really true. You know, like God is saying that that channel stays open and he wants us in everything. When I minister everywhere, I'm so aware that I'm standing in front of the throne. I'm so aware that God wants to do something. I'm so aware that God wants, and I'm always looking for the different realm to bring that realm into this realm and not to live only out of soulish. So the whole faith journey is a journey of heaven to earth. So I don't know if this is exactly what you, but our, our spirit starts to resonate with the frequency of heaven constantly. Not only when I worship, not only when I'm doing this, I live that heavenly frequency and live Christ within me, the hope of glory. And one of the things that is, I've just, you know, I've, again, having talked to 40 plus people who've had heaven experiences this past year, uh, there's a real weightiness in stewarding these sorts of stories. And I understand for you, when this book came out, you, you, had, some, you had to wrestle with doubt uh, and Jesus comforts you and helps you move in a direction with this book. I'd, I'd love to hear that story because, you know, I, I have many friends where they would, they sat on their heaven encounter for 15 years before they felt comfortable or released to share. I feel like there, there's such a, because these encounters are so personal 
and emotional and holy, uh, you know, the idea of putting them out into the world, it's a daunting thing to consider. Talk to us a bit about how you wrestled with that and how Jesus helped you to keep moving forward. You know what? Um, what happened was actually I was, uh, I knew I had to do the book. God said to me, do the book. And, um, you know, God taught me many things. And he said, while I write the, wrote the book, he said to me, okay, see the book, see the book. And I said, God, this would be a, a New York based seller. And I, he said, do you see it? I said, I see it. He says, bring it down. I anchor it in on earth. I anchor it in my spirit. And sure enough, it did became a New York based seller. But the night before I had to send the book in for publishing, I received those years a written letter from, from someone that's saying, you know what, that's not true what you were telling. And um, this is not your story. It's not true. And all of a sudden I thought, oh, Lord God, what if I harm your kingdom? And I cried that night. I tell you, I cried. My husband put the light on. What on earth is wrong with you? And I told him the story. And he says, can't you see what the enemy tried to do? Can't you see? I'm like, no, I'm so upset. And anyway, I could go back to sleep and I said to the Lord, I said, God, I have a couple of hours. If you want me to do this book, you need to speak to me. So I'm lying there with eyes wide open. He didn't speak and I fall asleep. But while I fall asleep, my spirit man was right out there wide awake. And Jesus entered into the room and he sat on my bed, on my bed. I was amazed. My spirit man was up and I said, Jesus, you know, what's the first thing I asked him? I forgot about the book. I said, how can you love me so much? How can you love me this much? And I felt his presence and his love. You know what he said to me? Give me the book. And in the spirit, I took the book and I gave the book to him. He did this. He says, this book will be filled with my spirit. I woke up the next morning. My son's book, every day when he had breakfast, he wrote, I opened the book. He said, so what did Jesus do last night in your room? What did he tell you? And I want to tell you this story. I ministered in the USA a lot, and I came to this one place, and I met these people in um, Seattle. And this guy was busy with drugs. And his wife ordered this book. And he had to get this book at the post office. And he put the book in the car. And all of a sudden, he felt funny. He says, what is this book? And he went home and he looked at the book. His wife went to bed. He opened the book. He opened and he read, Jesus is coming for his bride. Let me see if I can find that letter. To everyone who seek the presence of Jesus like me, be prepared for when he comes back. It will be sooner than you think. You need to accept him as your Lord and Savior. Please accept him as soon as possible while you still have a chance to do it. Jesus paid the price for you and me, showed me everything in heaven and hell. Believe me when I say you don't want to go to hell. He's coming for a pure bride. He read, he read this letter. So the guy said, so he's coming for a bride? Now he was doing drugs. He was smoking stuff. He went outside. He says, so he's not coming for a stinking bride. He's talking to himself. And he sat there. He prayed, will you please help me? He went, he showered, he went to bed. He got up the next morning. He went to work. His wife's like, what's wrong? He normally fell asleep, stinking, not going to work. The Afternoon, she says, what happened to you? He says, I don't know. I haven't smoked. I haven't drink. I haven't taken drugs. And I went to work and I'm sober. You know what? He did some drugs and he even sell drugs. He was caught after his experience with God. He had to go to jail for a couple of months, but he took the book with. And he could help people pray for them. And people got saved. 
It's not about man. It's about the king of the universe, Jesus, our Messiah, who loves us so much. And when he visits us, he doesn't want us to wait for a near-death experience. He doesn't want us to wait until my son is busy dying. He wants us to cry out for him right now, right now, because he's there for every one of us. And I think the place I'd like to land the interview is just get your perspective. I mean, on, on the one hand, I, and I've said this in many interviews, I feel with just all the trauma and the difficulties all of us have gone through the past few years, people realize their need for heaven and a hope of heaven and their need for a savior. And I, I would say, especially here in the West at a level we haven't realized since maybe World War II. Like it's it's just been a long time. We We certainly had a short-term revival here in the States after 9-11, but it was very short-lived. And so uh, just across the globe, you know, there's just a, a realization of our great need for a savior. Uh, I, I, I feel like we're in this season where, and, and I know every generation feels like they're, they're that generation and we're, we're walking through the end times, but um, just the, the time, the, so many of my friends across the globe are talking about, they feel like the time is short it seems like the veil is thinning with so many of these near-death experiences and heaven encounters, which again, I always say is a love letter from the Father, you know, inviting you to connect with His Son, Jesus. Um, I'd just love to hear your perspective on, you know, this message was timely when you wrote the book. I feel like it's even more timely in this season. You are so right. You know, I, I think back about the times 18 years ago, but today, when I read his letters today in that, in that book, I know that, you know, for God, we can say it's 80, 80 years ago, but God wants us daily to be ready, daily. You know, anything can happen. I know we are all focusing now on the time we are in, in the timeline, but you know what? No one of us know. If you, like me, lived three months in ICU with my son, I have seen so many people passed and died, not because of anything, but, you know, how they just die. We need to be ready every day. But not only just being ready, we need to come into matureness. The body of Christ need to come in matureness. The body of Christ need to come to a place where we entered into the place of the bride. The whole earth creation is waiting for the sons of God to get up and stand up. And I see what's happening now in the USA with, you know, with abortion things and everything that starts changing. This is what happened when when brethren come together and pray together, God moves and God wants to move on earth right now in this season. But people need to know that there is more in life just to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. He's coming for a bride and the bride needs to be in love with the king. And there's, you know, I look at my son till they, even till today, 30 year old man with a head injury daily in the word of God. His whole heart is just for the word of God. We need to be filled with the word of God. We need to be filled with passion, absolutely passion with God and bring that passion to the world. We need to bring Christ and the light to the world. And I think more than ever, wherever you are, we need to pray and ask people, ask the Lord, Lord, I'm thirsty and hungry for more of you. The world feeds us with so many things, so many things. And people are fed with, with the things of the world that dry in their spirit. Yeah, people often say the the five people you spend the most time with will be some of your biggest influences. Uh, you know, I look at how it's very easy to get lost on our screens and our devices, and uh, just get caught up in the news and social media and entertainment, and you know, completely avoid having time with God, and completely avoid having time with the Word. Uh, I, I like, for, for instance, I even removed all of my social media apps from my phone so they would no longer be a distraction. And do I miss out on something occasionally? Yes, am I sadder because I'm not looking at Facebook constantly? No, I'm actually a lot happier and more mindful of what's happening all around me and not constantly being so distracted. And so I feel like we're in a season where we need to drop all of these distractions and focus on what's important, focus on the path that God has us on, the people that are in front of us. Because uh, if we always have our head in a device or looking at a screen, we miss the person that God has right in front of us who's longing to uh, connect with the Father. Maybe we're that person that God wants to use uh, to make an impact and change their life today. Uh, I know you have multiple books. You've got a website. Uh, you minister, you speak. So in terms of 
connecting with you, finding out more, how do we discover you on the web? My website's retamcpherson.com. I also do kingdom coaching. So people connect on me with Zoom and we pray together for whatever there is. We pray together. My heart is to take your hand and let's walk this journey to fulfill our destinies here on earth and bring kingdom to earth. Bring heaven to earth as it is in heaven here on earth. And like we do with every episode, we'll make it easy. We'll have links in the description and the show notes to places where you can pick up copies of the books that we've mentioned in this episode and a link to Rieta's website as well. Uh, I want to say thank you so much for being a part of this episode today. Once again, our guest was Rietta McPherson, and our book today was A Message from God, A 12-Year-Old Boy's Experience in Heaven. And Rietta, I want to say thank you so much for sharing with us today. It's truly been an honor and a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much, Sean. God bless you.